Picture a time before time, before the earth, before humanity, when the cosmos was a realm of peace, until unrest stirred. Let's journey back to a celestial realm, untouched by the corruption of sin, where harmony and tranquility reigned supreme. Yet in the heart of one of heaven's most magnificent beings, a seed of discontent began to grow. This being was Lucifer, the morning star, a being of unparalleled splendor and power. Scriptures paint a vivid portrait of Lucifer's grandeur, as seen in the book of Ezekiel. You were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Yet as his beauty and wisdom grew, so did his pride. The book of Isaiah reveals this, stating, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly on the heights of Zaphon. I will ascend to the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Astonishing, isn't it? That in a place of perfection and peace, pride and rebellion could find a foothold. Yet free will was given to all heavenly beings, just as it is given to us. Lucifer chose to use his free will to foster pride and ambition, leading to his great rebellion. This rebellion was not a solitary act. Lucifer, with his cunning and persuasive prowess, influenced a third of the angelic host to join him in his defiant stand against the Creator. This marked the inception of a cosmic conflict, a war that would stretch across the eons, a war that would eventually reach our own terrestrial sphere. And thus, a third of the heavenly hosts were swept away, marking the beginning of a cosmic war. This was the first act in a drama that continues to unfold, a narrative that we are all a part of. The tale of the Great Rebellion in Heaven is one that echoes through time, resonating in the world around us today. In the blink of an eye, Heaven was torn asunder. A third of the angels, deceived, were cast out. As we delve into this dramatic event, we begin to understand the profound implications of choice and consequence. These angels, celestial beings of light and purity, made the conscious choice to follow Lucifer in his rebellion against the divine order. They were swayed by his promises of power, his allure of freedom, the intoxicating idea of challenging the divine, yet their choice was not without consequences. The scripture in Revelation 12, 4 paints a vivid picture of their fall. It speaks of the dragon's tail sweeping down a third of the stars in heaven and flinging them to earth. These stars, interpreted by many scholars as angels, were cast out of their heavenly abode their radiant glory dimmed, their divine connections severed. Their expulsion from heaven was not a mere punishment, but a manifestation of divine justice. It was a consequence of their choice to rebel, to turn away from their divine purpose and align themselves with the architect of chaos and discord. This transformation was not just physical, but spiritual. These angels, once symbols of purity and light, were transformed into demons, embodiments of darkness and deceit. Their fall serves as a stark reminder of the cost of rebellion against divine order. It underscores the gravity of their choice to follow Lucifer, to partake in his revolt and their subsequent fall from grace. However, their story also serves to remind us of the nature of divine justice. It isn't vindictive or arbitrary, but is always fair, always just. It is a system where actions have consequences, where choices matter, and where rebellion against the divine order carries a heavy price. Once heavenly beings, now fallen angels, a stark reminder of the cost of rebellion. As we delve deeper into this tale of celestial revolt and divine justice, we begin to understand the profound implications of our choices and the eternal consequences they carry. The battle did not end in heaven. It was brought to earth, humanity drawn into this cosmic conflict. With the fall of the angels, the war between light and darkness found a new battleground. Our world, the home of mankind. In the verdant paradise of Eden, the first humans, Adam and Eve, were caught in the crossfire. A creature, cunning and deceitful, slithered into the garden. This serpent, an avatar of the fallen angel Lucifer, weaved a web of lies and deceit. Let's consider the words of Genesis 3. 1. 7. The serpent asked Eve, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? Eve replied, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. The serpent, in his cunning, refuted, You will not certainly die, for God knows that when you eat from it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Thus the first seeds of doubt were sown. The deception of the serpent led to the first sin, the original fall of man. 
Adam and Eve succumbed to temptation, eating the forbidden fruit. Their eyes were opened, yes, but at a terrible cost. They became aware of their nakedness, they felt shame, and the innocence of humanity was forever lost. The battle that began in the celestial realm had now firmly entrenched itself on Earth. Every human heart became a battlefield, a site of constant struggle between the forces of light and darkness. This spiritual warfare, this cosmic conflict, rages on, unseen, yet profoundly influential. It shapes our decisions, our actions, our moral and ethical choices. The echoes of that ancient heavenly rebellion still reverberate through the corridors of time, touching every life, every soul. The repercussions of that initial deception in the Garden of Eden continue to ripple through the ages, reminding us that the battle is far from over. In the heart of humanity, the battle rages on, a constant struggle between light and darkness. In the face of this cosmic conflict, hope emerges, a beacon of light in the darkness. Amidst the celestial strife and the spiritual warfare that rages on, a promise of redemption and salvation echoes through the universe. This promise is not a whisper in the wind, but a resounding declaration made by none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, it is written, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This, dear friends, is the promise of redemption. It's a promise that despite the fallen angels, despite the battles we face, be it in the heavens or here on earth, there is a saving grace. There is a love so profound that it would sacrifice its only son to ensure our salvation. But this promise isn't just about redemption in the afterlife. It's a promise that reverberates through our everyday existence. It's a promise that Amidst the spiritual warfare, believers can find hope and strength in God. This isn't a passive hope, a hope that sits idly by and waits for the storm to pass. No, this is an active hope, a hope that gives us the strength to weather the storm, to fight the good fight, and to emerge victorious. Believers are not alone in this battle. We are not mere spectators, watching from the sidelines as the forces of good and evil clash. We are active participants armed with the armor of God, fortified by His Word and strengthened by His love. This is where we find our hope, not in the absence of conflict, but in the midst of it. For it is in the heat of battle that our faith is tested, and it is in these trials that our hope is forged. Our hope is not based on wishful thinking or blind optimism. It is rooted in the divine promise of God, a promise that is as steadfast as the rising sun, as enduring as the eternal heavens. In the midst of chaos, hope shines bright, a testament to divine love and redemption. The battle may be fierce, but the war is already won. The final victory is assured. This cosmic conflict, the celestial face-off between good and evil, has an inevitable conclusion, a conclusion foretold in the scriptures etched in the annals of prophecy. The book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 speaks of the final defeat of Lucifer, the fallen angel. It tells us, And the devil, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is not a tale of despair, but one of hope, the ultimate triumph of good over evil. The end of this great battle heralds the beginning of a new era, a new reality one of unending peace and harmony. In this new reality, a new heaven and a new earth will emerge, free from the stains of sin. Revelations chapter 21 verses 1 to 4 paints a vivid picture of this promised paradise. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. This divine promise is our beacon of hope amid the tumultuous seas of life. It is the light at the end of the tunnel, the dawn after the darkest night. It is the assurance that the forces of good will prevail, that peace will triumph over chaos, love over hatred, and life over death. This final victory is not just a victory for the heavenly hosts, but for all of us. It is an affirmation of our faith, a testament to our resilience, and a celebration of our spiritual journey. In the end, peace shall return, harmony restored. Hold on to hope, for the victory is ours. 
If you find value in this video and wish to journey further into understanding, subscribe and like this video. Together, let us unravel the mysteries of our existence.